Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jesse. You're watching JL's Comics, and I think that I'm live. I'm not sure, um, and I don't know. I'm using a different app right now to do this live thing. Uh, it's actually on my phone. Uh, I'm using my Wi-Fi at the house. Um, I have a bunch of books to show, um, so I'm going to show these just this way. It's a little bit easier, but I haven't done a video in a little while. It's been, uh, I would say, a couple of weeks since I did a haul video, but I've gone out. I've done enough, um, you know, back issue digging and all that good stuff to kind of have enough books to do a haul and I just had a lot of stuff going on you know personal life and, and you know how that goes um, like for example last week we had to cancel the show so that should tell you um, you know kind of like um, you know life just sometimes kind of gets in the way and you get caught up with that and you know you don't have time to do these videos so I figure um, do it now do it this way so that's uh, that's what I'm doing here so I'll just start off I'll just show the books but I do want to remind you guys <laughs> uh, I do want to remind you guys that tomorrow night Tuesday night 8 30 we are going to be doing uh, the show again it'll be episode 41 we've got a lot of great stuff to talk about it'll be myself uh, what's up Don how you doing man um, it'll be myself um, Justin and Chris uh, excuse me Justin and Edwin Chris will be out. He's still tending to the baby and, and some personal things there. Um, just so you know, Don, I am using uh, this app that I saw you use once, um, and I thought this was a good idea. So I'm actually doing this live from my phone right now. So uh, thanks for you. Shout out to you for giving me the idea for this app here on the phone. I like it better than, than some of the others, but I do think that I have Facebook Live now, so maybe next time I'll try that. Anyways, enough rambling. Let's look at some freaking books. Okay, so I guess I'll show you guys some of the new stuff. I haven't actually gone, like I said, life has gotten in the way. I haven't gone um, to get my books from last week yet. So these are a little bit older. Well, I've gotten a couple, just not my pull. Like I got this, it's the uh, cover C for All-Star Batman number 10. There's a glare, of course. It's this one. Uh, it's the first appearance of Princess Vic, I think her first name is. I just thought that was a really pretty badass cover. So I had to get that one, right? Cool. I got this black and white. Uh, it's regression number one. It's the spawn variant. Really cool with the eyes there, right? Hey, what's up, Chris? Yeah, I'm just showing some books, you know. Figure I'd kind of wet my appetite back. It's been a little bit of time since I actually did a haul video or a live video. Um, so I figured this was a good way to kind of get back to it. You know, I want to just kind of get back in my groove of things, you know what I mean? So figure this would start that up. Okay, so this, uh, I think I might have shown this, or I talked about it. It's Secret Empire. Um, and as soon as I saw it, it had X-23 on the cover. Damn, that glare, man. Um, I even have the shades down. Anyways, um, this is through Unknown Comics. Uh, and this is Dale Keown uh, cover. Um, what's up, man? Um, as soon as I saw this, I just said, I got to get it. Can't go wrong with X-23, in my opinion. All right, so I don't normally, well, maybe I do. I'm not going to say that because that's a lie. But I did get the Spawn uh, Director's Cut number one. Sucker for these. I like Spawn. Um, this is the cover B, and it's a really great uh, Clayton Crane cover. Really, really cool. I did not get the third one, the cover A, but, you know, I figured two is enough, especially at the $4.99 price. And then I got this one, which is the ultimate... Um, Spider-Man homage. And I think you guys... Yeah, exactly. She really is. Um, I think you guys have probably heard this, but he did write McFarlane after Bagley, Mark Bagley. So the interesting thing with it, if you haven't heard it, is actually um, Bagley did the interiors on the first issue. It was actually Joe Quesada who did the cover for the Ultimate Spider-Man issue one. So he, he tried to give his props there, and there's FCO uh, Placencia, I think it is. Um, he tried to give the props, but he gave it to ba Bagley instead of, um, instead of uh, Quesada. So interesting little tidbit there. Um, this book, Medicine, pretty cool concept. I haven't read it yet. This is the cover C. Um, it's called like the surgery variant or something. Anyways, uh, the concept behind this is kind of pretty cool. These people are kind of forced to like um, help out with some of the villains. You can see this guy here. Sort of like a, a evil version of Night Nurse, I guess you could say. Um, again, I haven't read it yet, so I'm not sure um, exactly my take on it. But there's that book. 
Um, okay, so these should be shown side by side. I haven't shown these on camera, although everybody's seen them. So there you go. These is Batman 21 and 22, the lenticulars. But I did get uh, this book, which is another Batman 22. And it is, uh, if you notice, different price. It's a newsstand variant. So on the newsstands, um, well, that's a bad example because this, this one's a little bit more because of the cover. But normally, obviously, there's a two ninety nine. So the lenticulars, I mean, the uh, the newsstands are usually three ninety nine. Well, they add a, a dollar to the price. Let's just say that. So like the two ninety nine would be the four ninety nine, and then the other way to tell is on the barcode. It usually says um, direct sales. Let's see if I can show you direct sales right there. See it? Okay. And on this one, the space. Oop is blank so that's where it would be so that's two ways to tell um if it's a newsstand and it may say in the indicia as well i didn't check no it does it call it they call it the 3d motion cover lenticular printing so if you want to get overly specific on it okay i can't go wrong with frank cho so there you go there's some cho on the bat horse the bat equine Spider Gwen, I love me some Spider Gwen, so I always get the Spider Gwen, and I just wanted to say Spider Gwen multiple times, so that's my excuse. All right, there we go. You guys have seen these, so I'm cruising through these. Jay, I know you like this. I wanted the other cover, actually, for this one, but they were sold out. The one with um, Jonathan on the cover, looking really badass. But this cover is still pretty cool, so uh, this is actually one of my favorite books for... What's up, Alex? How you doing, man? Uh, this is one of my favorite books uh, through uh, Rebirth right now, or DC, I should say. I really like that story. Um, speaking of stories I really like is uh, Paper Girls, number 14, uh, Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, great Cliff Chang. Um, he's really consistent with the cover art on these. I really like the colors he uses. They really pop quite a bit. Um, then, of course, you got Matt Wilson and Jared Fletcher on the creative team as well. Um, really great. Um, I... I think it was actually said, it might have been Chris who said it, um, excuse me, it might have been uh, Dark Avengers C86 who said it. Um, this book is just screaming for a cinematic treatment. I don't know if he's going to do it, um, but this story, man, this is just saying, put me on film. I'm telling you, man, that it's a good story. If you haven't checked it out, it's a good story. All right. And then uh, Finch after Liefeld. We're doing all the homages, right? This is Young Blood, of course. <laughs> he says no. I don't know. It would be too crazy on film, I know, but and I don't think it will be um, for a long time. I don't think he wants it to be, but you know, I think it, if they did it, maybe an animated version would be good. How about that? Animated. Let's compromise. How about that? All right. So that's kind of all the new books I got. I know there was a bunch that I missed because I didn't get my regular pull list. That's just stuff that I've kind of gotten randomly. So I found this for a dollar. It's Action Comics 595. I got to get a backing board for it. It's the first um, Silver Banshee. There you go. Pretty clean copy. There's a couple of ticks. I mean, I'd put it maybe in VF range there, but it was a dollar. So can't complain on that. Um, and then I found this little shiny little aliens predator the deadliest of the species ash can and this came in um i think this magazine was called heroes illustrated i think and it was issue number three that's not the full name of the magazine but um oh okay <laughs> first okay um so yeah, and this was a dollar. I didn't know what the hell it was, but I was like, okay, that look, that's a pretty cool looking image right there with the predator in the background, right? And this chick here. Anyways, it was a dollar. This is volume two or three, I think. So it's not like the, the one that everybody wants, but I do like this cover and I'm trying to pick up as much New God stuff as I can. So I, this came out in 89, I think it was. Yeah, February of 89. And it was a dollar, so I couldn't pass it up. There you go. New Gods, man. Great Kirby stuff. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend the New, um, the new Gods. Um, this was a dollar as well. This is uh, Incredible Hulk 377, and it's a really 
pop in color there. I'm trying to get used to where the camera is, you know, which way to go. <laughs> so, all right, so Hulk, Credible Hulk 377. Um, can you guys hear me okay? I hope so. So this is the issue where uh, the Gray Hulk and the Green Hulk kind of combine. Um, yeah, man, New Gods, I highly recommend it. Um, any any of the volumes, really, they're, they're pretty good. Um, so he's having this like it, internal battle in his mind, and you got Doc Samson there as well, and you got the Gray Hulk and the Green Hulk, and he's going through and seeing like his family, um, and eventually they combine. Like right at the end, you see him, and he's like this new. Actually, I'll show you the the last page that combines the two Hulks. It's really cool. There's a couple um, other printings for it where it's different colors, but yeah, it's really cool with the. Um, the green in the background and stuff but check out the last page this guy here it's uh dale keown again uh doing this is when he was doing it look at him there okay so that's the, um the green and the gray combined they liked it enough that they put them over here too <laughs> all right so there's that one cool story that's a good time in in um in Hulk there. Okay, cool. Um, so this is a crossover. I actually paid eight dollars for this, which isn't you know a great deal. It's kind of I guess what market is, um, but it's Uncanny X Men and the New Teen Titans. Apparently, something happens like at the edge of the universe, and they kind of like bleed over to each other, and they see each other. Check out Phoenix in the background there too. I haven't actually read this. Um, have you guys read it? Do you like it? I'm reading the chat here. So if you're watching this later, um, I just want to give a shout out to a couple people. Philly Superman, Dark Avenger C86 is here. Don Comic Book Junkie is here. I saw Alex the Calm Recorder earlier. I don't know if I can, can scroll. No, I cannot scroll. Okay. So if you hear me say something random, it's because I am reading the chat. Okay. So there you go. Um, but I like this cover. I like X-Men. I like Teen Titans. So there you go. What's up, Brian? How you doing? Okay, cool. You, it's a good crossover? Yeah. Um, I always, I've seen this cover a few times, you know, in different shops, and I'm always like, damn, I got to get that. And they've always been a little more than I wanted to pay, to be honest with you. Um, like 15 or so bucks. But when I saw this one for eight, I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll pick that up, man. Yeah, it's cool. All right, so this one is an exclusive. Um, it's all new Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the newest volume, which is like volume 480. No, I'm just kidding, but it might as well be. Um, and this is a cover by Natalie Sanders. It's not the uh, the Virgin. Um, it is Gamora, by the way. And um, this is her first time doing uh, like a big two sort of book, um, a cover. Uh, really amazing, very like sort of photorealistic. See that face? Come on, you can't say that's not good art. Well, I mean, you could, but you'd be lying. So there you go. So there's that one. Um, and getting back to the um, the newsstands, I actually went and I was looking for issue number 22 for The Flash, and they haven't gotten it yet. And I, I go to, for these, I go to um, Barnes & Noble. They usually have these. Um, so they're a little bit behind. Um, I really want the, the newsstand for that. Then I'll have like a full newsstand set for the button. Um, so I got, I ended up getting this one. It's the flash and it's the, uh, it's non lenticular, just like the other one. Right. Um, same thing. Everything still applies with all the newsstand stuff I was telling you about, but even without the, uh, the 3d motion, they call it, check that out. Come on. That's cool. That is really cool. All right. So that's the flash number 21. Um, all right, now we're going to get into some magic, okay? And I feel like I want to do a video at some point just on magic because I have, like, all of her stuff. Um, I want to kind of, like, run through her her history, her chronological history and, like, her story. Um, I think that will be a cool video. And I have enough of the books to kind of show, you know, as I go along there. But anyways, I just picked up. This is, like, my second or third copy of this. Every time I see it, I pick it up. It's Uncanny X-Men. 160 okay and this is uh the first um adult iliana so her history is a little bit convoluted that's why i think she warrants her own 
um, her own video. Like her first, first, first appearance, she was a baby and she was unnamed, was giant size X Men, and then you know she's in like issue one forty five and stuff like that, where you know she's a baby, this where she become an adult, blah blah blah. It goes on and on. Um, so there's a lot of different first appearances, and this is granted all before New Mutants when you get to like first Magic, right? So. And that was like a couple of years after all that. So there's there's a lot to her backstory and her history. So I may do a video on, on that. Um, I really like the way Art Adams draws magic. So I got this as New Mutants Forever. This is a mini series, really good story, but um, this is issue four or five. And this is a kind of magic when she was, it's different than where she is now with the black. See how she's there? with the black and the midriff showing and the parts of her thighs showing. So this is when she had like all the medieval armor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't do mutants without um, confusion. Movies, stories, you know, it's all convoluted. It's all complicated. Which time are they in? Which version of the character is it? You know, there's just so much there, it's crazy. Um, but this one is where she was getting, like, when she was using the soul sword and stuff, a bunch of the armor that would, like, come onto her body, right? Very, very beautiful cover there. Um, and then another Art Adams. This is a, a 1 in 10. It's a connecting cover for Original Sin. And this was a, um, I think it was, somebody tell me in the chat, there was a few volumes to this, not volumes, a few issues to it, and then one annual. Um, and he, Art Adams did a, a connecting set for for all of these. Um, but I think I'm just going to, I have like the regular covers, so I think I'm just going to stick with this one. Uh, really, I just wanted it because, you know, magic. Okay. And while we're talking about magic, uh, I think I saw Comically Flawed. What's up, brother? How you doing? And Trinity as well. What's going on, man? Um, while we're talking about Art Adams and while we're talking about magic, I got to show you this. I got this in the mail. I've been looking for this for a while. I absolutely love this cover. As soon as I saw it, I freaking fell in love with it. So, I, I mean, I had to get it as soon as I saw it for the right price. Okay, this is New Mutants. This is issue number 25. Uh, it's a variant. And again, Art Adams. Just soak it in. Soak it in. It's beautiful. It's a great cover. If you like magic, you got to have this cover. So really, in terms of like her variants, I think I only need two more. And I'll have like everything magic. So, stoked she's going to be in the movie, too. You know? That'll be great. It better be great, Anya. Um, so, I got... Uh, I found this for 8 bucks. I think it's a pretty good price. Brandon Choi, 1 in 25 for Batman number 4. This is the new 52 Batman. So, I have a really good run... Oh, damn it. I, there we go. I have a really good run of uh, the 1 in 25 ratio covers for Batman. Um... I think that it might have stopped at issue five when they went to like the combo pack stuff. But I do have like issue one through four, the one in 25s. Really like these covers. Amazing story too. Um, and we're talking about convoluted and a little bit of confusing with, with the history. Batman is not um, innocent of that as well. Like even with this, like there's a big debate about exactly which issue is like the first court of owls you know because you got the first mention then you have talon and you have the court of owls themselves and it's like is it two is it three is it four five we don't i don't know it's convoluted all right um i love gwenpool i think she's a cool character um i know she's a, a variant sort of yes i do adam yes i do comically flawed i sure do Um, so this is a, a local artist who did this cover. I really like his line art. He did that. Um, I don't know what type of work that is. Like what, uh, you know, Copics or whatever it is, you know, marker. I don't know. But I really liked it. He had a bunch at his table. And I got this on Free Comic Book Day. Um, his name is Silverback. That's what he goes by. You can see his signature there. Excuse me. There. And, um, like he gave me his business card. It looks like a credit card. I don't know. It's cool. I'll add it to my commission pile. Um, I found this for cover price. This is Redneck issue number one. Um, issue two comes out tomorrow, actually. But this is like the silver 
See that on the bottom? There's a silver and a gold, like the, the gold foil down here. Um, so there you go. Cool cover. Neat story, too. I'm definitely going to check out issue number two and see where it's going. So I do, I do like that story. Um, and then another local artist, and I, I think I showed this on the live show. Uh, his name is Greg Kirkpatrick, and he's really a really talented artist. This is uh, I have a, a couple pieces of his now, um, but he drew me an X-23. Um, really great cover. This is an all-new Wolverine um, issue number one. It's a blank cover, obviously. Um, he did this. Um, I forget what, which con it was, but it, it just happened. And see, there's his uh, Greg Kirkpatrick. There you go. Yeah, I got it for cover price, man. Um, I saw it on the shelf, and it was like a week after it came out, too. I went, Whoosh. but I looked for the, the gold, too. They didn't have it. And actually, there was a, a gold uh, foil. The retailer appreciation covers are usually the gold foil for for the, the trade dress or the, the name. Um, but I didn't find that, so I'll go back and see. Uh, but I he this shop that I go to, I really like it. It's called Lauderdale Comics. They do a lot of these covers that you find at other places for like 40 bucks or whatever for um, you know, cover price, like that one, for example. So um, I was stoked when I found that. I found a bunch of them too um, that I made it a point to pick up. I do go back for those uh, pretty regularly. Um, and I got this for free. I'll add it to the pile. I got plenty. Hey, does anybody want a free Superman? Number 500? Is it 500? I don't even know. Adventures of Superman. Still in the wrapper. From 93. It does include a Skybox trading card. Allegedly. I don't feel it, though. I think they're lying. There's no card in here. Oh, no, there is. It's up there. I see it. It's Superboy. Oh, I see all four of them. Okay, so Superboy. And you got Cyborg. You got Steel. And you got other dude. I forget the other dude's name. It was a bunch. The Reign of the Supermen. There's a card in there. Okay. Anyways. Okay, so that's the books I got. I, hopefully, I'm going to get my new books. Um, hopefully, I can go Wednesday and do a new video there. Uh, but join us tomorrow. Um, you know, it starts at 8.30 uh, on this channel right here. Uh, we are going to do episode 41 for Comic Conversation. We get a lot to talk about. Um, the big thing for me, I mean, there's a lot of like recent news, but the big thing that I want to kind of talk about, I'll take it. In. All right, man, this is um, is uh, Rich Buckler who passed away. Very prolific, iconic artist. Um, worked for both Marvel and DC. He invented, uh, not invented. He created uh, Deathlock. Um, he, uh, he worked, uh, it was, uh, Tales to Astonish, number 25. He worked on, uh, Legion of Superheroes. Um, he worked on Superman versus Shazam. Um, he did, um, Black Panther when he was on, uh, Jungle Action. Um, he actually, he's the one, it was on Tales to Astonish 25. And I don't want to talk too much because we're going to talk about it tomorrow. But he is the one who hired George Perez. George Perez uh, worked on that book. That was his first like sort of professional work with Rich Buckler. So you can thank him for giving us George Perez and um, you know all the work of course he, that he did with Fantastic Four and he knew everything else. But I don't want to tell you too much right now because we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Thanks for joining me guys. I uh, hope this was fun. Hope this was a little bit of a different format than the way I normally do it. Um, I really appreciate everybody stopping by with your comments. Uh, I did see a couple thumbs there, so I do appreciate that as well. Uh, but this is Jesse here, JLS Comics. This has been another comic book call. See you guys later.